Hi, I'm Tom Smith. I'm here at the Hagerstown plant and I'd like to talk to you about coaching. Over the years, I've been fortunate enough to be exposed to a number of great mentors who took the time to show me the ropes. Effective coaching can be as simple as a football coach who points out a flaw in your technique or a business colleague who offers advice on how to deal with a difficult boss. For example, imagine me as a 15-year-old playing football. I'm a junior playing on the varsity team my first year in the varsity. And frankly, things aren't going very well. I'm not particularly talented, and I'm not uh, putting together the kind of effort that's earning me any playing time. About two or three games into the season, the coach takes a look at the whole team after he's watched film the night before and says, who's Fanny is way up in the air. And as I thought about it, I realized he was talking about me. When I got back out on the field that day and the days afterwards, I figured out that if I got in a proper stance, I was much more effective as a football player. The rest of the year went much better, and frankly, the year after that was a heck of a lot of fun. And how about business? There's times anyone in business can offer you uh, tips, techniques, advice. I had a colleague that I was working with in a situation where we had a particularly difficult boss. Uh, I'm sure none of you have experienced that. Certainly my staff has not. But in effect, this guy and I were not getting along. And it was important for us to get along because we were the two top individuals in the organization. And late one night, I was working out on the line with one of our engineers. He looked at me and he said, Do I remember a time in my career when I was with a different company where I had a very hard time getting along with my boss? And I realized it was up to me to begin to change that. So I decided that I'd go over and sit down with this guy and just spend 10 or 15 minutes a day talking with him with no particular set agenda, news of the day, sports, what's going on with the kids. And we began to develop a relationship. And I realized what he was doing is he was giving me advice as to how I should work with my boss. I took that advice. And frankly, things were much, much better after that. Not only did we develop a personal relationship, but the business relationship was much more effective. You're probably already aware that we've begun an ambitious effort to create an environment where feedback, coaching, and personal development opportunities are fundamental elements of our day-to-day -day operation. In fact, your responses to the Voice of Employee Survey helped us realize how important these initiatives are to our future success. 85% of you completed the survey, which is a phenomenal response rate, and shows how much you care about our company. One thing that came through loud and clear was a desire for more feedback and coaching, and for greater openness and more dialogue between colleagues across all levels of the organization. These survey responses revealed an area in need of improvement. And when we factored in the first-hand feedback from the focus groups we held as a follow-up to the survey, we realized that more needs to be done in this area. Frankly, a lot is already being done, but some of us don't always see the connection between our ongoing learning and development programs and the concept of a coaching culture. These formal development programs include developing effective presentation skills, which more than 125 employees have completed. Situational leadership, too, taken by 350 employees, and building high-performance teams, completed by more than 700 employees. It's also important to realize that learning and coaching are not always part of a formal training program. Six Sigma, Workout, Kaizen, New Product Development, and 5S are ongoing team-based activities that provide significant opportunities to learn from both colleagues and supervisors. In effect, a kind of informal coaching. Each of these activities not only help develop skills, knowledge, and process discipline, they also provide the foundation in which feedback and coaching are essential elements to our success. So we feel it's fair to say that we do have a lot of development activities in place. However, we understand the need for more formal structure that provides every employee with feedback and coaching. A structure where communication flows freely in all directions within the organization. A structure that enables us to measure progress and make adjustments to continuously improve the process. One of the first steps toward achieving these important goals was the formation of a coaching team whose members represent every functional area within our group. Vice President of Operations Alan Mackey and I are the team's sponsors, and Business Director Rob Melandra is the team leader.
At the beginning of this video, Tom talked about memorable coaching experiences. I'd like to tell you now about one of mine because it's another good example of the kind of employee interaction we want to encourage in order to develop a strong coaching culture. A few years ago, my team launched a product with a new customer. After the first year, we both realized that we weren't getting the desired results. So my customer asked if we conduct a competitive market analysis showing what's actually happening in the marketplace so we can make some corrections. My team did just that. And when we were putting together all the information, it became very clear that the factual data that we collected was going to be completely contrary to the perception my customer had. So I knew this was going to be a tough meeting. As I was putting together this information, my boss came into my office and talked about the situation. He knew I was struggling with how I was going to present the information. He gave me a few bits of advice, knowing the customer very well. He recommended that since the customer was analytical, I may want to forward the information to him in advance so he could review it, digest it, and come up with his own findings. I thought that was a good idea, and I did just that. Later that week, I went into my customer's office, sat down, had a very healthy meeting, there was no debate about the facts, and we put together an action plan that was very, very successful for both companies. Everybody on the coaching team has experienced the value of constructive feedback and advice from knowledgeable supervisors. We drew on our different experiences to develop a definition of the term coaching to guide us as we move forward. Coaching is a two-way focused conversation with the explicit purpose of providing direction, guidance, developmental feedback, support, or recognition resulting in a deeper relationship between colleagues based upon mutual respect and accountability. This definition is a good place to start. To give you a rough timeline for the rollout of this program, our goal is that by the end of 2011, everyone in management, down to and including plant staff, will be evaluated on their current coaching skills. Training will be provided to enable them to deliver effective coaching to their reports and to receive feedback from their managers. Work with frontline leaders will begin in 2012. That's the long range plan. For the coming year, we have several specific steps lined up to begin the process of transforming the group's culture. First, develop and conduct a formal coaching training program for supervisors. Second, establish a process to ensure annual discussions of personal and professional development goals between employees and supervisors. Finally, establish a process to ensure that professional development activities discussed by employee and supervisor, activities that are aligned closely with the agreed upon goals, are actually completed. As Tom mentioned, our organization has always emphasized coaching even if we didn't use that word to describe the kinds of interactions that occur in our facilities on a daily basis. Here are a couple examples featuring employees from our Hagerstown plant that demonstrate the kind of open communication and coaching we want to encourage. You know, my coaching philosophy is one that, you know, I prefer not to ask someone to do something that I wouldn't at least try myself. And I want, I want to express to, you know, to the folks that, you know, that I manage that, you know, coaching, is pos coaching can be positive and coaching can be negative. But you could take a negative situation and turn it positive. It's extremely important to understand that coaching is not a meeting of 10-15 minutes. It's a continuous process that it will enhance our <clears throat> performance, it will enhance our trust and respect for one another. A lot of times in the workplace we are reactionary and we react, we react and we coach people based on something that they did that unfortunately was negative. You know, we reacted to that. You know, where we want to go with it is being able to take that, that proactive approach to coaching. I feel respected, I feel trustworthy, and I feel like 
I'm part of the solution, not part of the problem. And that add up to our continuous improvement programs and feel like we are a team, a strong team. To me, it's, it was, it's been a very good you know, opportunity to learn. And that's, to me, what coaching is, opportunities that, are, that give us the ability to learn. And also, I, I'm working uh, with Joe right now, and Joe is an open book for uh, two-way communication. And it's extremely important to have respect for the other people's ideas. Uh, we always sit and talk about things that we have conflict about, and we come to a solution that we will have a win-win situation, and uh, it's a positive thing for the outlook for the company. I usually talk with my people um, maybe once a month after I bring up the month's report and most of my people want to see how they did for the month and I like to sit down and interact with them and let them know where they, how they're performing and if there's any steps we need to do to improve their performance. I mean I've been doing this job for 19 years and I pretty much know what to do but she makes, she sits me down and says, well, th just sit back, relax, and think about what you're doing, and that really, that really helps me. He more or less gives me the ideas out of his own thinking as to what he needs to do to improve. And I probably have already jotted down those things, but it's better for him to see what he's doing and how he can improve. Well, one good thing with Anna being the supervisor and, and the other four shifts too, we have uh, supervisors that's already done this job, you know, and that's, that's why they can help us a lot because they already know they've been, they've been doing the job and, they, and they've known it for years. I mean, they've, they've been here just as long as I have. Earlier, Rob gave you an idea of the timeline for our coaching program. We want to emphasize that we're being candid and realistic regarding the timing of our plan. If you work at a plant, or in sales, or in Valley Forge, you may not see any dramatic changes at first. That's because we're starting with my staff and I, and working our way throughout the organization from there. It's necessary for us to take this approach because people at the higher levels of management must be trained first. Starting from the top and working through to the plant and office levels will make it possible for us to truly create an environment where communication from every employee is just as valued as communications that originate from a specific person at the management level. Over the next few years, I'll continue to visit all of our facilities and we'll hold Voice of Employee focus groups with employees. Alan and I will also hold meetings to gather additional feedback. Finally, I'd like to thank every employee for your participation in the VOE survey and focus groups and your willingness to contribute to our efforts to create a genuine coaching culture. We'll continue the VOE survey and follow-up on an annual basis. In fact, the next one is scheduled for this spring. Although we feel it's probably too soon for the survey to reflect much improvement from last year, that's okay. I'm confident that we've laid out the roadmap and are well on our way to creating a truly excellent working environment. I'd also like to remind you that it's ultimately your responsibility to identify your own development needs and to be proactive in working with your supervisor to meet these needs. We can put formal and informal training programs in place, but it's up to you to take advantage of the available resources. Knowing what a dedicated professional workforce we have in our organization, I'm certain that you will do just that. Thanks for your attention. We're embarking on an exciting new journey that will help us all succeed at both the personal and business level.